I was bored, so like every other AI Python YouTuber, I built a Streamlit chatbot app with Langchain and GPT-3. It's a good opportunity to show you some advanced Streamlit concepts like form callbacks, breaking an iframe, static serving, and the hardest of all skills, CSS. Add a catchy banger title to our app, a placeholder for the chat messages between yourself and a large language model, a form placeholder for the user prompt, and a placeholder for your credit card information. Just kidding. My YouTube videos are free, but consider donating coffees. It keeps me awake while editing. Let's create the user prompt first. Enter the form placeholder context manager, split it into two columns, a six foot long one and a one foot long one. Add the large text input in the left column and a red button in the right column. Don't worry, that's not where we use CSS to make it red. We keep CSS for later. Here we just change the type argument to primary to switch the color of the button to the primary color of the theme. We which, by pure coincidence, is red in the default streamit theme. Anyway, this is all not very aligned. That chat label is taking too much place, so we collapse it to its doom. Now that form is in top form. Streamit will fully rerun the script from top to bottom whenever you click on submit. But then there's no way to store all user messages in a Python variable if it gets overridden and reinitialized at each rerun. So where do we persist the user message history? Whenever you need to remember information between reruns in Streamlit, we store those in session state. As such, initialize your app session state with an empty list of user messages. Create a callback method called onClickCallback, which will be called back on a click of the submit button through the onClick argument. Yes, Streamlit has callback, so it is more of a sneaky... Hey, 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 Streamlit, run this callback method to edit the session state before doing the rerun. In this callback, append the user message to the list of messages in session state. Wait, how do we access the text input value from the callback? Now there's a hidden trick. You can access the value of any streaming widget that has a key argument. Those are all reachable from session state. Add a key argument to the text input, retrieve the value of the text input in the callback, and store that user message in session state. Finally, browse through the list of messages in session state and display each message as a markdown element in the chat placeholder. Congratulations! You can now write into a digital journal. Chatting with yourself can be a boring activity. You, you know, you'd rather be talking with the collective wisdom of the internet. Or, or GPT-3 if you prefer. Create a data class to contain a message and its original sender. Use some type hints to artificially constrain the origin argument to being a human or an AI. Go get an OpenAI API key from OpenAI's website, store this key in Streamlit's secrets file, and please safeguard that key from the dark world of GitHub crawled by key scanners. Load an OpenAI connection to text DaVinci 003 using ST secrets to load the key from the secrets file. Then integrate that connection into a Langchain conversation chain. It will retain and synthesize your past messages as context for the chatbot. Remember, what do we do if we don't want to lose that chain and its memory on every Streamlit rerun? We put this in session state. That's where you should initialize it. Then inside the callback, you can call the chain on the user input and store both your and the AI's messages in session state. Display the origin in the chat placeholder too, and now you have a two-way conversation with a generative pre-trained transformer. By the way, if you rope up this code into a get OpenAI callback, you can retrieve the number of tokens used by the Langchain code, which basically translates into the cost of your OpenAI API call. Definitely store this token number in session state too, and display it in your credit card placeholder. You can also reveal the full memory of the conversation chain, just to ensure sending it as context to OpenAI every time is not eating up too many tokens like a Pac-Man. <laughs> but this is not a Langchain tutorial, I know you're here for what's to come next, CSS. You now have a user prompt that sends your writings to OpenAI, stores the conversation in session state, and displays it as Markdown. We are going to pimp those Markdown blocks with CSS. I can sense your excitement for the screen. <laughs> why, why am I hyping CSS like this? Create a static folder and add a style CSS file in there. Also download some human and AI avatars from the flat icon website into this folder. There's a very specific reason we put the avatar icons in the static folder. First, they're static, obviously, 
but also by adding the enable static serving flag in the configuration for your app, the Streamit server will serve any images in the static folder from the app static URI. Read the CSS file as a Python string, then apply it to the whole app through the unsafe allow HTML markdown block. That unsafe argument looks scary and unofficial, but don't worry. This has been unofficially powering streaming apps around the world for the past three years. You can rely on this until the visual styling update appears by the end of the year. Incorporate each chat message into a div block and attach a chat row CSS class to this div. Open your style CSS file and then edit the background color of the CSS to something red hot. Streamly doesn't automatically hot reload when you save the styles file. That's why you have to hit the R key in your app or click rerun in the hamburger menu to update the CSS loading. Yes, what? Beautiful design. We want our chat row to comprise of two components, an image avatar on the left and the text on the right. Let's create those elements in each markdown block. Add an image tag to load the icon into and a div tag with the actual message. The image avatars are loaded from app static. You can use the ternary conditional operator, yes, this thing has an actual name, to choose the human image if you're the original sender of the message or the robot image otherwise. We want the avatar and text side by side, not one upon the other. Let's make the whole chat row container a flex box by adding the flex display to the chat row CSS class. Write a new row reverse CSS class in the styles file reverse that flexbox direction in there and apply this class to the chat row container. Yeah, we only want this on the user messages. Thanks to the awesome usage of ternary conditional operators, you can add this to the chat rows of user generated messages only. And that looks more like a real chat, right? The text looks a little dull. Add a chat bubble CSS class to the message div. Using yet another ternary thingy, attach an AI bubble or human bubble CSS class to the div, depending on the original sender of the message. Finally, bestow a chat icon CSS class to the avatar so every bit of the markdown can be stylized. No jealous. Add all those CSS classes in the styles and time for some pimp my button action. Also, I'm too lazy to use my mouse to go click the submit button, so at the end of the script, add a pixel size streamlit HTML component. Contrary to unsafe markdown, this thing can actually run JavaScript in a constrained iframe sandbox. But we're the Chrysan Break generation, or maybe you're the Freebird generation, or even older, the Lisp generation. But what I mean is we like to break things. So with some clever JavaScript code, break out from the iframe into your app's DOM, browse through all the buttons to find the submit button, and then attach a keyboard event listener to the app's DOM that reacts to you pressing the enter button. The event listener should respond by clicking on submit. You can now input a prompt, press enter to submit the prompt, and wait for a response from the LLM. Good enough. I think. If you want another tutorial about breaking the iframe to apply CSS, check out this story. There's an hacker in it. It's awesome.